Okay, before we get too far into the modeling tools in Maya, there's a few more things you need to probably know about manipulating components of 3D objects and adjusting attributes to be able to create the types of geometries that you're going to need. So I'll just keep my little Annabelle character in there to keep us company, but I'm going to create a new polygonal object here. Now if I just create this cylinder, you'll notice that if I open the attributes window here with this button, or you can just push Control A to open the attribute editor. As long as this object is selected, I get attributes that have to do with this object in this window here. So it creates, by default, several different tabs regarding each object. So if I start with the basic P cylinder, polygon cylinder, that's the default name of that object. I can give it a name. Each transform has a name. So the transform is the location data and the rotation and scale that have to do with that object. So I can call it test cylinder. One. You'll notice the under the transform attributes, there is this translate data, the XYZ coordinates, show where that object is in the 3D space. If I go ahead and enter numbers there, 0, 0, 0, it's going to automatically move it to the center of the world, meaning it's going to be sitting right below my character. So I can just undo that and move it back into this area. I can also set a rotation if I want it to be 90 degrees. In one or more of the axes, I can rotate it. I can also set a base scale, 0.5. That's not uniform, right? So I can adjust attributes with some precision using this transform attributes window here. Move, rotate, scale. Now under this P cylinder shape tab, do we have more attributes. Under the third tab called poly cylinder one, we have some useful data about the object itself under poly cylinder history. This is a really useful thing because when I create a cylinder from a primitive, I don't always have the right number of sections, the right radius or height. So I can adjust all those things here, change the height by dragging these sliders or entering a number. I can enter an even number like 10 for the height, two for the radius. I can also enter a specific number of subdivisions. The default here is 20, but if I only want 12, I can enter that. Just type in the number and push the return key. If I want more sections, I can you know, add 80 or something like that. Now that's a really high polygon cylinder. There's no need for that. So, so I have 12 subdivisions. That's a good number. But how about we do 16? Now I can divide that in quarters and in quarters again. It's a good multiple of two. And it's enough sides to make a nice round looking cylinder. Now if I want some subdivisions along the height, I can do that by dragging this slider, entering a specific number, eight. So now I have my cylinder chopped up into different levels. And this will be useful as I start to model this, whatever this thing is going to be. I don't need that many polygons unless I know that I need them or that I probably will need them. So it's good to do some planning ahead. What am I going to make out of this primitive object? That'll help me to decide how many sections, how many height sections. And in fact, you can even make cap sections. If you watch what happens when I slide this, it actually divides up my cap into different sections. We'll use this um, when we make the crayons. But similarly, I can do those same kind of manipulations with other objects. If I go to my polysphere tab, I can adjust the radius after I've created this sphere without necessarily having to scale it. I can also adjust my subdivisions all the way down to three. So if I slide that back up, let's say I just enter 16 sections. We like that number. And for the height, I'll also enter. 16. Similarly with a cube, I don't have to just have this basic cube. I can go to my polycube tab there and adjust the scale so I can make this 12 units wide, 4 units high, and let's say 6 units deep. Then I can create subdivisions along the width, let's say 6, subdivisions along the height, and subdivisions along the depth. So now I can chop up that cube into smaller blocks before I begin modeling its parts. I'm going to turn on wireframe over shaded so we can see the different subdivisions of these primitive objects. Let's say I create a plane and I want to adjust it. I get 16 by 24 units maybe. And I want some subdivisions in that. So I can drag those up. Now there's a whole lot of geometry there that I can use for modeling tasks. Let's make a torus and adjust the attributes of it. There's the radius adjustment, section radius, Subdivision axis, maybe we don't want so many. Keep it low poly. 16, is that enough? And let's say 12 subdivisions around the height. Pyramid, I can actually give this more sides. Five-sided pyramid, three-sided pyramid, and subdivisions, even subdivisions along the cap, which in this case is the bottom. So lots of fun geometries that you can create in preparation for the objects that you're going to make from these primitives. Let's do a pipe section, see what kind of attributes we can arrange here. We can adjust the thickness, the height, and the subdivisions, of course. Let's go to 24, maybe a couple of height subdivisions. And do we want any cap subdivisions? Well, that depends. What are we making? 
these tools in the attribute editor will give you a good starting point for the objects you plan to make. So plan ahead, plan well, and prepare your primitive objects using the attribute editor.